Steel Curtain at Kennywood set the record for the most inversions on any roller coaster in North America with nine in total. This colossal looping coaster has a downright bizarre appearance, but it packs a lot of crazy elements into a compact footprint, plus the rise theme to the area's beloved Pittsburgh Steelers football team. There really isn't another coaster quite like Steel Curtain out there, but is there a reason for that? Find out what I think about Steel Curtain in this review. In 1991, Kennywood opened Steel Phantom, which would have the largest drop in the world at 225 feet or 68.5 meters. But unlike most hypercoasters, Steel Phantom was a multi-looper. While everyone praised the ride's iconic second drop down the ravine, this arrow creation was criticized for its roughness, particularly through the inversions. This is why Steel Phantom was ultimately converted into Phantom's Revenge in 2001, which was a more conventional hypercoaster free of inversions. Flash forward to 2018. Kennywood was teasing Project 412, which was promised to be another record breaking roller coaster. Unlike a lot of projects that are spoiled by leaks, this project was kept tightly under wraps. No one knew who the manufacturer would be or what type of ride Kennywood was getting. That allowed Kennywood to have a fun marketing campaign where they provide nine different numbers without any context. That would be in the ride's final stats. And on July 19th, 2018, the mystery was revealed. Kennywood would be attempting their second hyper multi-looper. Steel Curtain would be built by SNS Sansei, and it would be unlike any other coaster they had designed previously. SNS was most well known for their compressed air launch coasters, but Steel Curtain would feature a 220 foot or 67 meter tall lift hill, the world's tallest inversion at 197 feet or 60 meters in the air, and the most inversions on a coaster in North America with nine. Along with the coaster's impressive statistics, the ride received praise for its unique theme. The ride would be part of Steelers Country, a new land themed to the region's beloved Pittsburgh Steelers. While I'm a New England Patriots fan and despise the Steelers, I have to admit it's a really cool theme to tie in an amusement ride with a local pro sports team. The ride also has a strange appearance. It looks like a Kinex coaster with a sea of supports and jumbled mess of track. I think the coaster looks sort of ugly to be honest, but it is really cool how close you can get to it as you walk around Steelers country. Steel Curtain opened later than expected in 2019 and was plagued by downtime in its opening year. The ride was often closed or running just one train. In 2020, the ride was kept closed all year as it received new seatbelts. In 2021, Steel Curtain opened later than expected after it valleyed on a cold morning but now it seems to be running daily. And if you're visiting Kennywood, I would strongly recommend riding this immediately. New rides are always major draws, and Steel Curtain seems to be especially appealing to park guests because of its popular theme and imposing appearance. And for most of its life thus far, it has run just one train, resulting in an extremely long queue line that moves slowly. And sometimes that line exceeds over two hours. Thankfully, the park just got the second train up and running for the 2021 season, and I do hope they intend to use it most days because the ride really needs it. Steel Curtain is a very long ride. The coaster has 4,000 feet, or 1,200 meters of track, and the meat of the ride takes roughly a minute to navigate. But station to station, Steel Curtain is over 3 minutes in length. The ride has one of the slowest lift hills in the world that takes a minute to ascend, and then it takes another minute to get from the final brake run into the station. Not only does the ride have a long cycle time, but it is a very slow loader. The employees need to perform a separate seatbelt check before lowering the restraints, which is a similar policy to what you see in most RMCs. The ride also isn't very accommodating, and I often saw at least one rider struggling to fit on each train. The only downside to heading the steel curtain first is that may run a bit slow in the morning, especially if it's a cooler day. These were the conditions that caused Kennywood to valley the coaster early in 2021. So I expected the park to fill the train with water dummies for the morning test trains, but Kennywood actually did something a lot different. They called all the employees from the nearby rides, food stands, and shops to fill the train for the first few cycles before it opened to guests. I cannot say I've ever seen that before, the queue line is a series of switchbacks, 
but it does offer some great views of both Steel Curtain and Racer. Unfortunately, the ride doesn't really have any theming beyond the name, employees dress as referees, and the trains. But those trains really do look spectacular. They have the Pittsburgh Steeler colors, and the seat backs are designed to look like footballs. Not only do the trains look amazing, but they're super comfortable as well. I love how a coaster with this many inversions has just a lap bar, and the lap bar actually locks in place at the start of the ride, so you don't have to worry about the high G sections pushing the restraint down further during the ride. The one slight criticism I have with the trains is that the headrest tapers all the way down the seat back, which is a bit awkward for taller riders, but I just leaned forward to avoid this issue. And as for the seatbelt, I really didn't notice it during the ride. In my lone visit where I saw Steel Curtain operating, Kennywood was filling the station on a first come basis and not allowing riders to wait for the next train. I don't think this was COVID related because rides like Phantom's Revenge were allowing guests to fill the station and wait for whatever row they wanted for however many trains they needed to. I was lucky enough to get both a front row and back row ride and I slightly preferred my ride in the back, but I found the forces felt relatively consistent throughout the train. Once the trains have been checked, you hear the Steelers broadcasters Bill Hargrove and Tunch Ilkin come over the loudspeaker and announce the ride start. And then you crawl up the lift hill. Now I always thought Phantom's Revenge had a slow lift hill, but that lift feels like sky rushes compared to the one on Steel Curtain. This lift hill is extremely steep at a 50 degree angle and it offers spectacular views. The ride is already pretty tall, but considering the fact it's located at the edge of the ravine, makes it so you can see for miles. Once at the top, you get an amazing view of Kennywood, and then the action begins. The coaster starts with a small pre-drop, and then you traverse the world's tallest inversion, which RCDB classifies as a Dragonfire dive drop. So what exactly is this inversion? It's basically a cutback almost 200 feet above the ground, except the exit to the element dives all the way back down to the ground and this element delivers a copious amount of hang time at the start, and then you are abruptly whipped downwards. And the twist out of the element offers some solid laterals as well, particularly towards the back of the train, plus you get a series of head choppers the whole way down. It is a really unique element that sets the tone for how strange Steel Curtain will be. The bottom of this drop is where Steel Curtain reaches its max speed of 75 miles per hour, or 121 kilometers per hour, but oddly, the ride doesn't feel that fast, and that surprised me considering how many head choppers this ride has. The pull-up from the dive drop pulls some really good positive Gs, and they're maintained as you ascend the giant banana roll, which caused me to start graying out slightly. The banana roll wraps around the lift hill, and it feels more like a cobra roll to be honest. The exit to the first flip offers a pinch of hang time in the back row, but neither flip offers any force or hang time towards the front. The pull-up from the banana roll offers another dose of positive G's, and then you rocket through a speed hill that offers good sustained floater airtime throughout the whole train. The rapid switch from positive G's to negative G's is delightful. And then the positive G's return on the ascent into the sea serpent. And like the banana roll, the back row gets a tiny bit of hang time after the first flip. Meanwhile, neither flip offers any force or hang time in the front of the train. The exit to the Sea Serpent really whips you back towards the ground, and up until this point, the ride has taken place in the main superstructure, but the next part juts over the pond. The train then glides over a giant camelback, which delivers some nice sustained flejector airtime throughout the train. It is the ride's best airtime moment. Steel Curtain then traverses a dive loop. Up front, riders are thrown forwards at the apex. Is a similar feeling to what you experience in the front row in Twisted Colossus' Zero G roll. Meanwhile, those in the back get some hang time instead. That is followed by a Zero G stall that takes place directly above the midway. And I found it really interesting there were no nets to catch loose articles based on what most other parks do. Those up front get weak hang time throughout this stall, and you're sort of jerked through it. And that's not a bad thing, it just feels wild. Meanwhile, those in the back get some really strong hang time through the stall. It feels more like upside down sustained airtime. Steel Curtain then navigates a step up, which delivers some weak floater airtime throughout the train. 
and then the train cruises through a corkscrew above the queue line. The element offers weak hang time, but it is more sustained towards the back. Then comes a high speed bank turn that delivers the ride's final dose of strong positive G's, and then you coast through a cutback. The cutback isn't very forceful, nor does it offer any hang time, but it is a very disorienting element because you're still shell-shocked from the positive G's in the prior turn. You then hop up into the brake run, getting one last pop of airtime before coming to a stop. One of the best aspects of Steel Curtain is the pacing. Joe Draves designed this coaster in such a way that the transitions between each element offer strong positive G's or some airtime. The latter was a really nice surprise on an inversion-based coaster. And you're often barreling past a series of head choppers as well because of how the ride support structure is designed. In terms of smoothness, the coaster is perfectly smooth up front, and in the back, the train would shuffle through some of the inversions. It wasn't uncomfortable, just noticeable. So what would I rate Steel Curtain? I would give this coaster an 8 out of 10. Steel Curtain is a blitz of elements highlighted by the inversions. I love the hang time based inversions such as the dive drops and the zero-g stall. And the ride also mixes in a few airtime moments and sections with positive G's. The coaster is always doing something. The only criticism I have with this coaster is that a majority of the elements are decent to good rather than great. That is what holds Steel Curtain back from being an elite ride in my opinion. However, being able to chain as many decent to good elements in a row like Steel Curtain does is still admirable and something I really love. Steel Curtain is a unique coaster and is my second favorite ride at Kennywood. Phantom's Revenge is still the king of Kennywood, but Steel Curtain is the perfect complement. So those are my thoughts on Steel Curtain, the hyper multi-looper at Kennywood. What are your thoughts on this coaster? Have you ridden it? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and Spark videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.